Legion Lost, number seven, written by Tom DeFalco, art by Pete Woods. We left off last issue with Martian Manhunter basically saying, hey, you guys are stuck here. There's no time travel back to your time. So accept that. And also they got the other two team members back of Gates and Chameleon Girl, I think. So this issue opens up with a girl who's seemingly being tortured in some sort of medical way with like syringes and stuff she's unable to speak unable to do whatever but she can psychically scream out i'll get to that plot at the end it's kind of detached from the rest but the rest of the plot continues with new york city the entire team teleports in in front of this street thief named osman bin afadi who you know has seen he's seen some stuff out on these streets and the team doesn't reckon or see that he's seen them so they immediately change into a projection of 2012 fashion, which they specifically reference the Kardashians. Okay, so Timberwolf has the suspicion that somebody saw them, but he's not acting on it as of now. They all make their way to a hotel and immediately drop the costumes, which makes me wonder why we did that at all, but regardless... It basically boils down to a three-page long discussion of like, okay, if we're stuck here, what should we be doing? First off, should we keep on taking advantage of people? Because like we keep on just mentally pushing them to give us free stuff so that we can survive. But we also don't have any money to do anything with. Like we don't have hard currency. And they make the point of like, oh, what, should we get jobs? Is that what we should be doing here? And Chameleon Girl, she does a short little transformation for the sake of a joke, but apparently transforming actually, like, hurts her now, so that's a thing. Uh, additionally, they lost Alistair, so, and they, like, didn't stop the hypertaxis virus from getting out, so what should be their goal right now? And Tyrock pretty much is like, all right, look, we got to stay to the mission, we got to find Alistair, we got to do that. And at this exact moment, uh, Tellus gets a psychic blast from that girl from the first page. And Tyrock's like, no, we. I just said the mission. We need to stay focused on that. And everyone's just like, maybe we should just be general superheroes if we're just going to be here. Like, the mission's, like, we, we missed it. We screwed it up. It's done. Let's just help people where we can help them. And Wildfire kind of tries to step up to be team leader, but, you know, it's, it's getting a bit tense. At this point, Timberwolf steps out and realizes that they were seen by, I can't even remember this guy's name anymore. <laughs> They'd never say it again. Uh, Osman. And he's basically just like, hey, so here's the deal. Yes, I saw you guys, and of course you're not from around here, but that's cool, that's fine, I don't care about that. If you guys need to know the streets, though, I'm your man. And Timberwolf's like, what do you mean? He's like, see that building over there? It's got cash because they sell drugs and they're bad people. And he's like, cool. I need some cash. So Timberwolf busts in and starts just wrecking shop in this pharmaceutical, well, not actually pharmaceutical, but in this drug ring place. And as he does so, he walks out with this giant bag of money and surprises Osman. And Osman's like, oh, well, I'll take my slice. And it's like, Psh, slice. Since when do sidekicks get slices? He's like, I'm not, a, I'm not a sidekick. I'm a consultant. So, yeah, they just, a little maybe friendship brewing. I don't know. So then we go to, I guess I'll just say real quick, there's a couple more short little arguments about like what they should be doing. But for the most part, everyone comes to the agreement of like, okay, we'll do what we need to right now just to be able to get by. But the primary thing in this back half is Telus makes the psychic connection with this girl that's screaming out in like fear and pain. And they have Dawnstar... I'm still trying to remember all their names. Dawnstar fly over to the place where the psychic blast came out from, and they think she's being, like, tortured and being held by people with, like, heavy arms and security and stuff. But as it turns out, she's actually just a comatose girl who is being treated in a hospital, and they just she's just freaking out because of that. So there's nothing they can really do, but Telus stays inside of her mind and shows her, like, beautiful imagery and lets her live out in a happy landscape instead of the terrifying one she had and she explains that the whole reason she's in a coma is because she was texting and driving and she crashed into a tree and two of her friends died she managed to get out with just a coma but she's still 
she wonders why she's being punished for, or she knows she's being punished for this because of her actions. She's like, no, you're not being punished. Bad things just happen to people sometimes. But over the course of it, she starts to drift away a little bit. We see that the her parents are basically pulling her off of flight support as Telus is inside her mind. And one of the last things she says is like, hey, thank you for this. Thank you so much for showing me these things. I'm not afraid to go now. But you clearly have some secret that you're not telling your friends. And if so, you should because you never know when you might lose them and if you might blame yourself because of it. And so she passes away and everyone's like, hey, do you know where Timberwolf is, Tell us, Tell us." And Tellus is just, he's shook. He's like in grief. He's like, oh, God, what, what did I just go through? So, yeah, that happened. But then we get one panel at the very end here of a group of people, and I believe Rose Wilson from Superboy, and it says, New threats and thrills. Join us as we ramp up for The Culling, a major crossover event that stars the Legion Lost Team, Titans, and Superboy. So that's going to happen soon. I think that starts on issue 8, maybe 9. I don't know. I'll double check. Not looking forward to it. So... I'm good with this. I'm, 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 I like how this is. It's setting up, okay, the mission screwed up. What do we do now? How is our next steps going on? It's setting up the new status quo. Meanwhile, it told an actually very touching story with Telus and that psychic link to the girl. The only thing I could do without is the whole Timberwolf thing, but that tied into like, how are we supposed to survive out in the world today and he stole money from drug dealers so it's not it's like yeah it's a morally gray area but it's still more morally white than morally black so i like it. it's decent for now and i am finally getting character names so that's something but yeah i think i know they had to go through a thing where they tried to complete the mission before they got back to the what do we do now story but i feel like this is where i'm actually going to start caring about it because that whole hyper, hyper Texas virus thing, I didn't care about at all. Maybe that's just me, but it just, it seemed completely above my head in terms of what are we even talking about here. So overall, I'm going to give this one a 6.5. And most of that comes down to, I really do like the designs and layouts of the TELUS stuff and the story that it told there, as well as the promise of what's coming up next.